Over the past week, I tried making a very basic fishing mechanic which is heavily inspired by Stardew Valley. I'll show you the gameplay and then quickly go through the scene in the inspector. You can buy this template asset in my Patreon, itch.io and hopefully in Unity Asset Store if it gets approved. The links will be in the description. The character is wired to have 8 directional movement but the animator only shows 4 animations similar to how it is in Stardew Valley. It goes through a fishing ball based on the direction, then triggers a retract animation and then sets the fishing ball back to false. When you want to fish, the player has a child game object called the detector which searches for water game objects in its radius. Once you're facing the water, instead of having to wind up your fishing rod, you're given a min and max range and all you have to do is left click the water and it will cast the line renderer that will represent the fishing line. While in the fishing state, you can retract and cancel your fishing by right clicking your mouse button. Or you can start the mini game by clicking the bite indicator once it shows randomly after waiting X amount of seconds ranging from a min and max value. Now that you've activated the mini game, this is quite similar to Stardew Valley's mini game mechanic. The fish on the left side goes up and down randomly and the UI behind it is what the player controls by holding down and releasing the left mouse button. This will then help fill up the bar on the right side. If the progress bar reaches the bottom, the minigame finishes and the player won't be able to catch the fish. However, if the progress bar reaches the top, the player is rewarded randomly depending on the probability of the fish. They are then put into an inventory toolbar at the bottom. I've also coded it so that if you catch the same fish, it will stack and increment the number. I also made it so hovering over each slot with the mouse will show the name of the fish. You can click and drag them around, but the slot will always shift towards the left. I've set the maximum slot to 5, so once all slots are filled with different types of fish, it will then show a text at the top saying that the inventory is full. You won't be able to fish until you have a spare slot in your inventory. This is where the bin system comes in handy. Putting the fish in the bin decreases the amount of fish caught one by one, which can then make space for your inventory. Looking at our project, you can see I have multiple folders like animation, environmental tiles, prefabs and materials, resources, scripts, UI, in the game scene. For the animations folder, this is kind of self-explanatory. It holds all the animations from idle, running, fishing, retracting the fish line for every direction. The environmental tiles is all the tiles that the scene is made up of. For the prefabs and materials, this holds the prefab of the bobber, which is attached to the end of the fishing line. It also has the indicator that shows the byte text and the slot prefab which stores the fish data when you see it in the inventory. This has inventory slot script, draggable item, and canvas group game object attached to it. There are quite a few scripts which I wasn't really expecting since I was trying to make a small and very basic system, but here are the scripts to make the whole game scene run. I won't go through each script in this video, but if you do have any questions and need help, you can always shoot me a message in my Discord server. I also added comments on certain scripts where you would add specific audio since I didn't add audio for this prototype. Lastly, the UI. Majority of the UI is in PSD format, but once you purchase the asset, it will come with the PNG files for the canvas UI and player sprites. Looking over the hierarchy, I've opened up all the content so you can have a closer look into each element of the scene. The player canvas is pretty much straightforward. It has all the elements in the UI, like the minigame and inventory slot. The inventory panel game object itself has a grid layout group so that every time a slot gets put in the game object, they'll always be aligned and separated neatly in the UI. The minigame object has the fishing game object script attached to it. Here is what the inspector looks like. You can clearly see I've set the minigame duration at a higher number for testing purposes, but you can obviously play around with it to suit your needs. The fish move speed determines how fast the fish moves when in the minigame. The move interval is the chances of them constantly moving. I then made the progress bar feel quicker than it does when it decreases to add some balance to the game. And lastly, the lerp speed, which is the lerp speed of the fish when it goes up and down, making it look smooth instead of choppy. Next up is the player box. This handles the box behind the fish in the minigame when holding down and releasing the left mouse button. You would need to play around with the upper bound and lower bound to suit the size of your canvas, as well as your position. It's best to play around with it in game and then remember the values then log them after you stop testing. The rest are just standard UI that we will reference in other scripts. For the player, I have a standard rigid body, collider, animator, and the player movement script. I have the child game objects of the fish line spawn point and the water detector game object attached to the script. The fish line spawn point has a line render component, and the water detector game object has a rigid body and a collider that has is trigger tick as well as a fishing area detector script. Now for the important game objects the fishing system and inventory system. I have a fishing system script and the fish spawn system scripts attached to the game object. You can see that I established the cost range for the player as well as the speed of how fast they can throw the line renderer. I added an arch to the line renderer so that it looks like it's being thrown up and then going down to the water. There's also a min and max wait time and the layer of what we're trying to fish at. Here is where we would reference the game objects, UI and other scripts that are necessary. Moving on to the fish spawn system, I've established on how many fish types I want. For testing purposes, I've set it to 5. Here is where I would put the name of each fish and their catch slash probability rate. I've set them to 0.1 which is the lower chance of them being caught but setting it to 1 which is the max means they will spawn 100%. After that, I would add the image of each fish which was shown earlier in the UI folder. Last but not least, the inventory system game object. 
This has the inventory manager script and the inventory UI script. This lets me control the Mac inventory size and referencing the inventory panel and slot prefab. That is pretty much all for this quick overview of the asset. Once again, you can buy this template in my Patreon, its IO, and hopefully in the Unique Asset Store. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.